call the meeting to order. Madam Clerk, would you like to call roll? Thank you. Yes, tonight we're going to start with the Housing Authority meeting. Commissioner Beard? Here. Commissioner Bowie is absent, and Commissioner Beckles is absent. Commissioner Jones? Here. Commissioner Kaywin? Here. Commissioner O'Neill? Here. Commissioner Solorio? Here. Vice Chair T. Wynn? Here. And Chair Klomenstein? Here. One second. I don't seem to have the. <coughs> there it is. Mm -hmm. um, okay, we'll start with oral communications. I don't seem to have any pink cards, so moving on to reorganization 2A is selection of chair and 2B selection of vice chair. Madam Chair? Yes. I'd like to ask a question. Uh, I think you've done a great job last year. Would you be willing to do it for another year? I would. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that we renominate uh, Stephanie Klopfenstein as our chair. I'll second. Second. That. <laughs> Call for the vote, please. <laughs> okay. Motion receives seven yes votes. Thank you, everyone. Uh, and to be a selection of vice chair. If uh, Kim, uh, is Kim correct? No, Tuha. Uh, Tuha. Tuha, I'm sorry. Also, yeah. Yeah. I would like to make a motion if she's willing to accept it to stay on that position. Yes, it's in my honor. Thank okay. you. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. Call the vote. Call the vote, please. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Kim. <laughs> Motion received, seven yes votes. All right, uh, moving on to consent items um, 3A through 3D. Uh, we can <coughs> vote on those uh, simultaneously. Does anybody need to pull anything or have any further discussion? Okay, uh, let's call for the vote. Do we get a motion and a second? Oh. Motion. Oh. Did anyone motion? I'll move the balance. Thank I'll you. Second. Call for the vote. Who please. made the motion? Mayor who, who made, who? and Councilwoman. Yep. Oh. <laughs> Motion received, seven yes votes. All right, moving on, are there any matters from uh, commissioners or anyone, directors? Okay, seeing none, I guess we will adjourn. The next regular Housing Authority meeting will be <laughs> held on February 27th at 5.30. Okay, we'll now call the City Council meeting to order. Madam Clerk, would you like to call roll? Council Member O'Neill? Here. Council Member T. Wynn? Here. Council Member Klopfenstein? Here. Council Member K. Wynn? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Beard? Here. Mayor Jones? Here. And Council Member Bowie is absent. Thank you. Um, the uh, invocation by Kingsley O'Kariki, and I'd like to ask uh, Council Member Tuha Wynn to lead us in the pledge. Sure. Okay. Heavenly Father, grant us this evening clarity of vision, courage, and compassion of good humor as we deliberate decisions that affect the citizens of our city. Please guide us by your will, ensuring that decisions are based on the whole of the community and not just on opinions of one or few. Help us to keep in mind that as elected officials, we are here this evening to represent the wishes of all those who live in our community of Garden Grove. Amen. Please join me, face the, face the flag, and repeat after me. I, I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sorry, I messed you up. That's <laughs> great. Okay, we have um, two presentations tonight. Um, first is a community spotlight in recognition of Catherine Beck. Uh, tonight, 
Uh, the Garden Grove City Council is proud to recognize Boza Grande High School teacher for being named a finalist for the 2017 Presidential Awards for Excellence in Math and Science Teaching. Would Catherine Beck please come forward to the podium? Uh, in partnership with the California Science Teachers Association and California Math Council, the California Department of Education selects the nominees for the Presidential Awards for Excellence in Math and Science Teaching. Born in Alexandria, Virginia, Catherine joined the Guiding Grove Unified School District in 2004. For the past 13 years, she's taught advanced placement physics, chemistry, physical sciences, life science, algebra, pre-calculus, oh, advanced algebra, and trigonometry at Boza Grande High School. Last year, Catherine Beck was one of the eight teachers from across the state to be named a finalist for the 2017 Presidential Awards for Excellence in Mathematics and Science Teaching. This uh, pre prestigious award is the highest honor given in the nation for math and science teachers. On behalf of the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy, the National Science Foundation will be reviewing Catherine's application as a state finalist. At this time, the Mayor and City Council would like to present Catherine Beck with a certificate of appreciation to, in recognition of her prestigious nomination. The City of Garden Grove is extremely proud of her dedication to her students and her hard work and commitment. Congratulations, Karen. teacher and I normally can talk forever so I had to write this down and I'm also <laughs> so not used to a microphone <laughs> so I'm trying gonna try not to use a teacher voice um, so very briefly yeah I'd like to thank the City Council and the community for this recognition it's truly an honor and it's beyond humbling because I work with an amazing group of teachers both at my school site and in the district and really, truly, it could be any one of them up here instead of me tonight. So thank you so much. Um, and if I can, though, on behalf of science teachers in our district, take a moment. Um, we do what we do day in and day out because we never want kids to ever lose their sense of wonder or curiosity for how the world works and how things happen. Um, we teach them the fundamentals of science, but more importantly, we ask them to constantly question. We ask them to question everything from how leaves change their color and why they do that when they do, to how nuclear power plants work and if they can make it more efficient. We constantly ask them to question and to strive for more the day that they enter kindergarten to when they leave us in 12th grade. And we do this because we know that those same students will leave us eventually. And it's through their understanding of science and their constant questioning that they go out and make the world and our society a better place and better communities to live in. Because they are the future that drives us all forward, they need our constant support and for us to ask a few questions ourselves. Most importantly, those of you who are parents and grandparents, ask your kids tonight, what science did they learn today? They may just blow your circuits or even better yet, explain how they work. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, 1B, we have another presentation. This is from Orange County Transportation Authority uh, on the Harbor Corridor study. Just let me know when you're ready. Anytime, that's great. You're ready? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mayor, 
Council members, uh, I'm Eric Carlson. I am the OCTA project manager for the Central Harbor Boulevard Transit Corridor study. Um, we were here about a year ago to share the 12 draft alternatives on this study. And um, so thank you for including us again tonight. We, this study has been underway for just over two years now. And when we started, we developed a project uh, development team that consisted of a planning staff person from each of the cities in, in, in the study area. Uh, from Fullerton, from Anaheim, from Garden Grove and Santa Ana, uh, and also a representative from Caltrans. And we've been continuing to work with that project development team throughout this, this uh, process. And right now, we're just at the point where we're sharing the technical evaluation results with each of the city councils in the study area. And we're seeking uh, comments on, on the various alternatives. Um, so tonight we're going to walk through the evaluation results on those 12 alternatives and we're going to cover some of the city and community input received to date and also uh, next steps. And just to, to remind everyone, um, right now we're in the initial planning study phase. Uh, that's the first stage of a longer process. Um, and uh, in this process we're evaluating this broad set of alternatives. We're trying to narrow it down to a small handful of the best performing alternatives that also have uh, wide community support. So the three corridors we're focused on in the study are, uh, of course, we're focused on Harbor Boulevard and, and we're focused between Harbor and Westminster, uh, the future terminus of the OC streetcar, and the Fullerton Transportation Center at the north end of our, our study area. Um, we're also focused on the Anaheim Boulevard Lemon Street corridor between Cattell Avenue and the Fullerton Transportation Center. And then finally, we're also, we also analyzed uh, Cattell Avenue corridor between Harbor Boulevard and the Arctic, the Anaheim Regional Transportation Intermodal Center. Um, and we're right now in the draft final report uh, uh, phase of our, our study. Uh, we just made uh, presentations of the technical analysis to the OCTA Transit Committee in December and to the OCTA Board uh, earlier this <coughs> month. Um, so uh, why is Harbor uh, an important transit corridor? So har harbors are, are one of our busiest transit uh, our transit corridors. Uh, it accounts for approximately 8% of our daily boardings. We also have an international uh, tourist uh, destination right in the middle of our study area that attracts approximately 27 million annual visitors. Um, and we have population employment densities that are, are double and, and nearly triple uh, that of the county average. And, and each of the cities has, has you know, made it clear that there, there are a lot more projects, a lot more development going on. We know in the city of Garden Grove, uh, there's going to be a large increase in the number of hotel rooms and the number of housing units and, and retail square feet uh, available in this corridor. Um, so for all those reasons, uh, tr maintaining a high level of transit in this corridor is important. And uh, maintaining that high level of transit can, can help support that future growth that's coming to in the corridor. Um, so this study uh, evaluated four different mode options. Um, the first mode option is the enhanced bus. It, it's the least uh, uh, capital intensive of, of the mode options. And as we move from left to right, uh, the capital intensity goes up as well as the cost of implementing that project. Um, the enhanced bus um, would be an upgrade on our current uh, Bravo limited stop service that operates on Harbor today. Um, the current Bravo service operates on 12 minute headways and it uh, operates in a, a mixed flow traffic lane. Uh, so the enhanced bus option would continue to operate in mixed flow traffic uh, and it would con include some additional service features such as off, off board fare collection and all door boarding to allow passengers to get on and off the bus faster. That helps speed up the bus and you can get a 10 or 15 percent time, time improvement uh, moving the bus through by, by doing some of those things. We'd also look at transit si traffic, signal, uh, tra traffic signal priority for, for uh, transit vehicles and uh, queue jumps at strategic locations that would also help uh, the bus get through certain portions of the corridor. Um, the bus rapid uh, transit is the second alternative. Uh, this would look at employing these larger 60-foot buses, these articulated buses. They have uh, multiple entrances. Passengers can get on either entrance, um, and, th and it's level boarding, so it's, it's uh, faster boarding for people in uh, uh, wheelchairs and, and um, other forms of just allow allowing traffic to get on and off a lot faster. Um, the bus rapid transit also would employ a dedicated transit lane for approximately 50% of the alignment. 
Um, and in this study, we haven't uh, identified the stretches or the segments where that uh, dedicated lane would be employed. That would have to be uh, determined through further traffic impact analysis that would determine where that would work um, while still minimizing the impacts on other uh, vehicle traffic. Um, the third option is the streetcar operating in mixed flow traffic lane, um, much as is depicted in the picture there. Um, the streetcar vehicles are larger than the buses, even the articulated buses. They have the capacity to carry about 150 passengers. They usually include three sets of doors, which allows uh, passengers to board, um, get on and off fairly quickly. Um, and this really represents kind of an in, in increase in the level of uh, quality of the ride and of the visibility. So streetcars tend to attract more ridership uh, per mile than some of the bus alternatives. Um, and finally, the fourth uh, mode option is the rapid streetcar option, which includes uh, everything the streetcar includes, but also would operate in a dedicated uh, transit lane for approximately 50% of the alignment. Um, so there are four main alignments also that we, we looked at, um, and the 12 alternatives are distributed. We have approximately five alternatives that operate exclusively on Harbor Boulevard, and in the upper left-hand corner, um, there are four alternatives there that would connect Harbor and Westminster um, with the Fullerton Transportation Center via Harbor Boulevard. There is one short harbor alternative that would basically extend the OC streetcar uh, north from Harbor Westminster up to the Anaheim Resort and then terminate uh, there at Disney Way. Um, and then we have four alternatives that would operate on the Anaheim Lemon. Um, and so those would travel from Harbor Westminster up Harbor to the Anaheim Resort and they would transition over to Anaheim Boulevard and continue north um, and finally connect with the Fullerton Transportation Center. And then we have three that would travel up Harbor to the Anaheim Resort and then head east along Catella Avenue and uh, connect with the Arctic facility. Um, so the project development team uh, identified uh, a set of 24 performance metrics to help evaluate how each of the uh, alternatives uh, performed against um, several categories, six categories, including transit performance, uh, land use, connectivity, physical constraints, uh, mode choices and user experience, and uh, cost effectiveness. Um, and then there's a seventh category, a very important category, that's city and community input. This is a qualitative uh, category, and we're basically summarizing all the comments received uh, from the cities, from the public, from the stakeholders, and we're pr providing that in summary form to, to our board and to all, all the decision makers. Um, so this table summarizes uh, the scores of how the alternatives uh, scored against those 24 performance metrics. Um, the top scoring alternative was the Harbor Rapid Streetcar. Um, this operated exclusively on Harbor, and it connected uh, Harbor and Westminster with the Fullerton Transportation Center. The next two best uh, scoring were, were tied at 73, uh, the Harbor Long Streetcar and the Harbor Bus Rapid Transit. Uh, so a couple key takeaways from the results uh, that we can see is, one, that Harbor Boulevard performed the best at attracting ridership overall and on, on a per mile basis. Um, and the next best alignment was the Anaheim Lemon. So the, the, the next three best scoring alternatives operated on the Anaheim uh, Lemon alternative also connected Harbor Westminster with the Fullerton Transportation Center. Um, a second big takeaway was that uh, regarding the mode types that scored the best is the rapid streetcar, the streetcar, and the bus rapid transit uh, tended to score the best and attract the most ridership. Those are the most visible and they represent uh, kind of a higher quality uh, ride. And then the third takeaway is that the enhanced bus generally scored at, in the bottom four spots in the table. And, and that was basically, uh, we believe, um, the enhanced bus, while it provided some transit uh, travel time improvements, it, it uh, did not increase the riders uh, significantly in the corridor, and it, it did very little to, to increase riders on a system-wide basis. Um, so some of the key uh, technical issues that were identified by the project development team that would need to be addressed uh, in any, any future study or, or further study uh, are that Harbor Boulevard narrows to four lanes in parts of northern Anaheim and in <coughs> as you approach the downtown. And this could uh, present some challenges for some of the alternatives connecting to Fullerton Transportation Center. Um, for this reason, we've 
looked at Anaheim Lemon as a viable alternative uh, route, and uh, staff from both Fullerton and Anaheim uh, particularly supported looking at that as a, a viable alternative route, um, and, um, and and that's continued to be looked at. Um, and dedicated transit lanes would require more analysis in the next study phase. This would re require a, a complete uh, traffic impact analysis, which would be done as part of an environmental uh, analysis. And at that point, you would identify the portions that might uh, might work uh, as great candidates for um, dedicated transit lanes. Um, center running alignments with center stations were generally not supported by the staff from the four jurisdictions just due to the fact that having a center station uh, would likely mean some right-of-way impacts around those intersections or, or right-of-way would need to be um, acquired. Um, underlying changes to bus service south of Westminster was an issue that uh, was noted as an issue of concern to look at as, as any further evaluations are done um, in consideration of complete street concepts and avoidance of, of impacts to bike lanes was also noted. Um, so in regards to uh, input from the city councils, we are right now seeking uh, comments from each of the city councils. Last week we made this presentation to the city of Fullerton and received uh, some comments from, from that city. And uh, the city of Anaheim uh, took action a year ago actually, last January, to adopt a resolution stating their opposite opposition to the streetcar, uh, a streetcar system in the city of Anaheim. Um, it, you know, because each, each of our 12 alternatives travels into or through Anaheim, you know, that presents challenges for developing consensus around a streetcar uh, alternative. Um, but at this point, we are seeking input from, from each of the four cities. Um, community input, we, we conducted two rounds of outreach earlier in the process. Uh, to seek input um, from the public and stakeholders. We also conducted a couple of online uh, surveys um, and th these garnered about 700 responses and, and the responses were that 92% uh, of folks said yes we'd like to see uh, transit improvements on, on in this corridor. Um, the, the strong mode preference, uh, the strongest mode preference was for the rapid streetcar at 24% uh, of the responses and that was followed by the enhanced bus at 20% at bus rapid transit at 17 and streetcar at 13 percent of the responses. Um, the, the strongest route pre preference was for Harbor Boulevard at 37 percent. Um, and then the top characteristics noted by the, the respondents were that frequency of service was uh, the number one uh, uh, most popular uh, characteristic followed by hours of operation and overall travel time. And this is very, uh, these results on the characteristics is very consistent with other surveys that we've conducted over the past five years. So our, our uh, goal right now is to, you know, offer these council presentations to each of the councils and seek, seek their comments uh, to con continue to work with the corridor city's technical staff to identify any other issues um, for, for subsequent uh, study efforts and then to um, finalize our report, uh, incorporate these comments, and report back to the OCTA board. And I would like to point out that the draft final report and all of the appendices are available online at octa.net uh, backslash harbor or backslash harbor documents. Um, and, and you can find all the materials there. Thank you. Thank you. Can you take one sec? I want to um, open up for any questions or comments, but just to preface it real quick. Um, so this is just a presentation, it's not a voting item, um, but OCTA is definitely seeking input from quarter cities um, affected by this uh, study. And there have been countless hours of robust uh, deliberations about this in um, OCTA board meetings, transit committee meetings, whatnot. Um, so OCTA is looking for input from the cities and from the city of Garden Grove, which plays a key role right in the middle. As, as we know, we've got a streetcar project um, coming under construction, going from the Santa Ana Regional Transportation Center right through Willowick, and it will end at Harbor and Westminster. Um, that will be open within a few years, um, and it's uh, moving full speed ahead. Um, and we've got some degree of political resistance to streetcars going through Anaheim based on the current uh, political climate there. Um, the overwhelming um, sentiment from the board and from the transit committee was to direct and urge OCTA staff to proceed diligently, analytically, academically towards studying all these options and trying to find out what makes the most sense for um, the region uh, without any kind of political bias. Um, 
And so I would urge our council to kind of support that same logic and just say um, for uh, OCTA and their very bright staff to continue to keep their heads down, stay focused on the data and uh, statistics and numbers and projections and give um, clear and analytical recommendations as they see fit. So anyways, any questions, comments? Any? Just your comments about Anaheim. Is it is it strictly just the harbor itself that they're reluctant to see a streetcar or such, or is it just in general they just don't? Yeah, it, this has been primarily focused around harbor, but okay. in general it's no streetcar in Anaheim okay. at this time. As you may or may not recall, um, mm -hmm. I mean, streetcars in Orange County is a concept that goes back for mm -hmm. a few decades now. And the original attempt was um, kind of a fail because it was a top-down approach trying to look at a, what was called center line at the time. That didn't get off the ground, didn't go anywhere. Um, OCTA learned a lot from that. And in this go around, um, did what they called LPAs or locally preferred alternatives. So they actually gave each city a budget to work with. Um, to do studies and say, what's your locally preferred alternative in terms of um, using this segment of Measure M money that was dedicated for alternate types of transportation. Um, we teamed up with Santa Ana. We pooled our money together with Santa Ana, and that's where the, um, the OC Streetcar Project formed. Um, Anaheim was pro streetcar at the time. So there was a period of time where Anaheim was actually ahead of us uh, in, in terms of the timeline. Um, and then the politics changed, and so they kind of went on hold, and the Santa Ana Garden Grove one kept moving forward. And so here we are today. The Santa Ana Garden Grove piece is going to be the first um, to be installed. But intuitively, to me, it makes sense that a streetcar system wants to be a regional network that takes people to and from places of interest, places of employment, um, places of transportation and whatnot, and moves people around in kind of a, a network, not just a, a standalone four mile piece. So I'm hoping the OC streetcar is the start of something that spreads throughout the county that could get you to the airport, to the beaches, to to Disneyland, to whatnot, you know. Um, so yeah, any other questions, comments? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll move on to oral communications. Um, this is for all agencies. Tony Flores. Good evening, uh, Council. Uh, my name is Tony Flores. Um, I've sent you folks some emails over the last uh, few months, and I'm not sure if you've actually read them or not, um, but. You, you should have. I've talked with one or two of you about this. The first one had to do with the zoning, the zoning meeting, um, December 14th. Th those zoning administrative meetings, those are at 9 o'clock in the morning on a Thursday. M most folks are at work at that time, <coughs> most of us. I'd like you to consider changing that. I sent the email. You saw the questions on there. One of the concerns on that particular date was they're uh, looking and considering a, a yet adding yet another massage parlor to our city. You know, it, it's a cash business. Uh, not going to see a lot of sales tax revenue from that, and it's a massage parlor. I mean, I think we're all uh, have a maybe we don't like uh, human trafficking, um, right? Yeah, or can we agree on that? I, I think we can. So let, let's take a, a look at that as far as these massage parlors that are popping up in our city. Uh, another one has to do with our, our survey, the recent survey. Been trying to get the questions to the survey. Trying to get the questions. I feel like I'm talking to Hillary Clinton because it, it, it's climbing up. You know, I, I mean, really, I can't get copies of, of, a, of a survey for questions. I mean, it's just questions. Well, what's what's what are we hiding? You know, the the survey, of course, we came out and said that 67% of the people agree with what, what you folks are doing, which is kind of disingenuous because there's only 400 folks that were surveyed. Some of those folks don't even live in our city. You hope your folks are aware of that. Some of them don't even live in our city. And when you look at the population divided by, or, or multiplied against the, the folks that were actually surveyed and, and who said, yeah, they agree with it, it's 0.0015% that actually agree with the population. Uh, that, that's incredible. You need to fix that. Um, so I'm not quite sure what you folks are hiding, but you need to answer the questions, I believe, anyway. And that's just not for me. A lot of folks were calling. Um, I do get phone calls on emails, texts on our crime rate, the audit control crime rate. We were getting smacked during the holiday season. You folks have seen the emails here. 
Um, not just whining or complaining, along with it, I have a, uh, a plan that I think we need to implement regarding expanding our, our patrol, maybe our detectives, also putting together a, a crime task force, you know, with citizens, part of the council, some of our law enforcement folks. But it's not just complaining. There's some actual suggestions here. I've yet to hear from you folks. You folks can, can you know, give me a call. I'm, I'm uh, easy to get a hold of. I know you, you mentioned about the, the Brown Act. Well, you guys haven't really been concerned about the Brown Act in the past, and I know we've had meetings with developers where you folks aren't shy about meeting with those folks. I mean, your campaign statements certainly <laughs> reflect that. Uh, so I'm a citizen, born and raised in the United States of America. I suggest you folks give me a call because uh, I would like to talk to you about that. I mean, um, as far as crime, I do have an idea what goes on with that. I'm one of two people on my terminal that actually handle safety and security. And in the conversations I've had with uh, federal and state officials, local uh, law enforcement, we get into anti-terrorism, counter-terrorism. Um, you come out, uh, in fact, I'll even invite you folks out there. Mr. Stiles has been out there. Uh, he's checked out our automated terminal. And we didn't talk one word about city business. We just confined it to that. And uh, you can come see what's going on. But I can show you exactly what I know and, and what suggestions I may have. And other folks in our community who have given me suggestions to pass on to you folks. And that's what I've done with it. Uh, looking at the uh, budgets and the CAFRs or the, the comprehensive annual finance reports, uh, there appears to be $2.4 million in water monies. And I went back to our presentation from last January uh, of 2017. $2.4 million bucks in there that really looks like it's for something else other than water, and I believe it is. And I believe if we hadn't have used that money, $2.4 million, we would not have had to raise our, our water rates. Imagine that. Okay, hotels are, are kicking butt, we're being told, but yet in that survey we're saying that, you know, we don't know how to manage money and we need to scrape up 19 more million bucks there. Yep, we've given a, what, 100 million over, 100 million to the uh, Great Wolf and maybe another 17.6 to the next folks that we're talking about. No, no concerns there with anyone. And yet we turn around and tell folks we need to raise our sewer water and trash rates. It's not good, folks. Uh, this is an election year. And whether I decide to run for, for council or mayor, or I don't decide to run at all. Um, you folks need to step it up, and we need to find candidates and council members who are going to do something on behalf of the people. Uh, Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you. Esmeralda and Carmen. Good evening, Mayor Jones and council members. My name is Esmeralda Michelle, and I am a resident of Garden Grove's District 5 and a junior at Santiago High School. I am also the president of the Young Senators on my campus, a club dedicated to promoting civic engagement and service at Santiago. Good evening, Mayor Jones and council members. My name is Carmen Caballero. I am a resident of Garden Grove's District 5 and a senior at Santiago High School. I am the vice president of Young Senators. Uh, as Esmeralda said, it is a club that we have created to promote uh, civic engagement and service at Santiago. Yes. Um, we come here today to invite the city to collaborate with the Santiago High School Young Senators in a community event. We propose an evening with your electives, a night where the community can hear from elected officials and learn how to further participate in their community. We hope to be in communication with the city to organize this event and have our families hear from the board about the great work that you all are, do that you all are doing. Um, with your approval, we look forward to meeting with the city manager to discuss logistics and community outreach. Thank you, Mayor Jones and members of the board. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you guys for coming out. John Hall. Mayor Jones, honorable members of the City Council, honorable staff, my name is John Holm. I'm a 38-year resident and businessman here in California. Uh, I specialize in articulated robots and anything related to manufacturing. And I'm here to talk to you about item 4D. I was just thrilled to death that you are supporting and working with a company called House Foods of the several hundred, if not thousands, of companies that I worked with in California. House Foods is one of the best I've seen. Not only is it considered one of the best in California, but it's one of the best in the United States of America. And I'll tell you why. 
All good manufacturing starts with raw material. If you have good feedstock coming into a manufacturing plant, whether it's aluminum, steel, food, you're going to have good feedstock going out the backside of the plant. 90% of the soy grown in the United States of America is GMO, genetic, genetically op modified organism, which means that it is tainted. There are unintended consequences. House Foods uses pure soy. They make the finest tofu in the United States. And I'm just thrilled that the city has taken initiative to work with and support House Foods. They're a noble company. They deserve a lot of respect. Uh, they're a little hard to talk to because they're pure Japanese, but they're right, great to work with and they're good, solid people. So I salute the council and especially the staff for doing that. Thank you. Thanks, John. Last but certainly not least, uh, Nicholas Dibbs. Good evening, Mayor Jones, members of the City Council, staff, uh, visitors and guests, and citizens of Garden Grove. My name is Nicholas Dibbs. I'm a homeowner and a uh, longtime resident of West Garden Grove and uh, graduate of Pacifica High School with honors and became a teacher at Cal, through Cal State Long Beach and taught in the uh, Garden Grove Unified School District for over 16 years in a variety of assignments. And um, I was not originally gonna come tonight, but when I saw at the last minute that Catherine Beck was being recognized, I couldn't resist and say a few words uh, in honor of her. I know, I know she's already left, but she was recognized earlier uh, as receiving the uh, 2017 Presidential Award f uh, as a finalist, Presidential Award for Excellence in Mathematics and Science Teaching, and I'm a science teacher. Um, I had the pleasure of filling in for her in her honors AP physics classes a number of times. And in her room at Bolsa Grande High School is a big poster of Albert Einstein. And so I want to read a quote from Albert Einstein fitting for this occasion. Quote, it is the supreme art of the teacher to awaken joy in creative expression and knowledge, unquote, Albert Einstein. The mo one of the most important jobs of our, of our society, our country of the, in the world is being a teacher and imparting in the students the importance of civic engagement, of uh, getting involved in government and uh, helping students to become successful citizens because they are the future of our nation. And um, it's, our schools are the bedrock of our communities and future. And so I'm honored to be here tonight to share with you my insights into Mrs. Beck or Ms. Beck and to tell you that uh, it's, it has been a pleasure uh, filling in for her on a variety of times in her uh, AP uh, physics classes. And uh, if anybody is deserving of that award, it is certainly her. Um, now that leads me to the next thing on civic engagement. Uh, as a graduate with honors from Pacifica High School, I participated in Youth and Government Day, which some of you know um, I initiated a couple of years ago, bringing that back. And it flourished for several years uh, through the youth commission that we had at that time in the city and um, for about I guess maybe 18 20 years or so and then we went 20 years without it and I asked about bringing it back and I'm just pleased that it's gonna happen finally uh, next month so congratulations uh, to the uh, city staff and the council for finally getting it done through a couple of administrations of the council it started when Bao Win was mayor and now Mayor Jones is continuing. And so I'm glad that we're bringing back the Youth and Government Day and in including and encouraging civic, civic engagement of about 50 top-notch uh, government students and ASB officers that will um, convene next month. Now, um, let me mention a, an important item, which is in uh, item 4E which is the approval of the 2018 investment policy, reappointment of the treasurer and the deputy city treasurer and delegation of investment authority. Garden Grove was one of uh, three cities, as I recall, that did not get mixed up in the uh, Orange County bankruptcy debacle. 
and I remember it well, uh, when um, the treasurer's county treasurer at that time uh, uh, was disgraced and had, uh, unfortunately, the funds, public funds were, mis were, were uh, misspent and so on and investments went sour. But this city was one of three cities that did not get involved in that. Uh, economic times are going pretty good right now. But we've lived through cycles of ups and downs. And uh, what goes up can come down and we're due for a correction at some point. And so I want to encourage the council to set up an investment committee so that it's, this is not just gonna be up to one or two people and, and to over, oversee this and, and to make sure our investments are conservative and well protected. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we have one uh, written communication item 3A, which is consideration of a request from the Sister City Association of Garden Grove for co-sponsorship of the 2018 Strawberry Stomp 5K. Yes, go ahead. Good evening, Mayor and members of the City Council. The Sister City Association of Garden Grove is requesting City Council approval for co-sponsorship of the 2018 Strawberry Stomp 5K that will be held on Saturday, May 26. The association is a local nonprofit organization that is in good standing and has been serving Garden Grove since 1989. Each year, the association sends Garden Grove youth to our sister city, Anyang, South Korea, and also hosts their youth as part of their student exchange program. All proceeds from their fundraising efforts go directly towards sending students overseas and hosting the incoming exchange students here. Co-sponsorship for the 2018 Strawberry Stomp 5K will have an impact on the city's general fund for an approximate amount of $10,177. Staff recommends that the City Council consider the request from the Sister City Association of Garden Grove for co-sponsorship of their 2018 Strawberry Stomp 5K. Staff is available for any questions you may have. Thank you. Any questions? Question <coughs> or comments? Uh, okay. Question and comment. Um, I know they're asking. Pardon me. <coughs> they're asking for um, co-sponsorship. I'm very supportive of that. Uh, this is more of a legacy program with the city. It has been for the last 29 years. <coughs> this group is a nonprofit group. It's pr primarily set up to support a sister city program that is a city program, in my view. And so with that, all our efforts to support it as a city go towards the nonprofit and their efforts to have an exchange program. Uh, we just finished this exchange program this last week. We had a council dinner. It was very nice, well received. I know they appreciated it. Our students appreciate it. I've been over there um, twice myself as a council member, and uh, it's very reciprocal. So with that uh, and the program and its value to our city as a sister city, I think uh, I definitely support this. But in lieu of them paying us another $1,000, it seems like we're giving money back to a nonprofit that is using nonprofit money to basically support a program that is a city program, in my view. So I would suggest we uh, allocate the full $11,177, thank them for their offer of, of $1,000, because that money is, again, put back into the program itself and offsets their cost for, for all the activities that they do here as well as over, overseas. So. With that, I'd like to make that motion that we um, co-sponsor the event and we waive the $11,177 in its entirety. Second. Can I do that? Please. I was just going to say, can I second that? Oh, sure. <laughs> sure. Second. Any other discussion? Or and I want to thank all the volunteers <laughs> and host families in the City Guard Grove for their participation, all the efforts of all the volunteers throughout the years, board members, but mostly the host families and the students themselves. They're the benefactors, and they, our students do represent the city so well as youth ambassadors. They learn a lot, but they also provide, and they bring back a lot. So with that, again, I want to encourage everybody to support this motion. Call the vote. motion received six yes votes we'll now um, recess to other agencies going to successor agency uh, madam clerk would you like to call roll 
Member Beard? Here. Member O'Neill? Here. Member T. Wynn? Here. Member Klovenstein? <coughs> Here. Member K. Wynn? Here. Vice Chair Bowie is absent, and Chair Jones? Here. Uh, we already did oral communication simultaneously with City Council and other agencies. Uh, move on to consent items, three items for approval. Um, any polls or a motion? Motion. <coughs> Second. Call the vote. Second. <coughs> Motion received, six yes votes. Any matters from agency members? Um, seeing none, we will adjourn to the sanitary district meeting. With that, I'd like to ask the clerk to call the meeting to order. Roll call. Member Bowie is absent. Member Jones? Here. Member Klovenstein? Here. Member K Kim Wynn? Here. Member Tuha Wynn? Here. Vice President O'Neill? Here. And President Beard? Here. Uh, the first order of business is oral, commu oral communication, which we've already covered simultaneously with the other meetings. Um, reorganization, item 2A, selection of a president. Um, if I, Go ahead. I would like to uh, nominate President Beard to take on the role yet again for 2018. Thank you. I'll second that. Motion second, call for the vote. Motion received, six yes votes. Thank you. Next order of business is selection of a vice president. Can I nominate uh, Councilman John O'Neill to continue with his second year as a vice chair? I'd like to do that. I'll second that. Okay. Motion is second, call for the vote. Motion received, six yes votes. One consent item, and that's to receive and file the minutes from the meeting held on Move November it. 28th, 2017. Move it. Motion. Se second. And a second. Motion and second. Uh, call for the vote. <coughs> Motion received, six yes votes. And last time was adjournment, so we'll be adjourned to Tuesday, February 27th, 2018. Send Thank it back you. to the council meeting. Thank you. We'll reconvene the um, city council meeting on to item four, consent items. It's recommended 4A through 4H be acted on simultaneously unless anyone would like to pull an item. I'd like to pull a couple items from that. Yeah, that would be, oh, sorry, let me get to that. Uh, I think it's, pardon me, there it is here. Okay, yeah, items four, four D, and then four, four F. Okay, would you like uh, to move, move the, the balance? balance? Second. Call the vote. Motion received, six yes votes. Okay, uh, 4D. 4D. Uh, I just, I think uh, the speaker, Mr. Holm, did an eloquent job of highlighting the benefits of this. I'd just like staff to comment on it and give us some background information if they want. Uh, yes, uh, good evening, Mayor and City Council members. Um, consent item 4D tonight is a request that the City Council approve an agreement with LSA Associates to provide a, a preparation and process of CEQA documents and to approve a reimbursement agreement with House Foods America Corporation. Uh, House Foods um, is a tofu manufacturer. It's uh, the largest in the nation. They uh, began operation in Japan in 1913 uh, and then established in the U.S. in 1980 uh, with the sales office in L.A. Uh, they um, opened an establishment here in Garden Grove in 1997. 
um, in a uh, 125,000 square foot building over on the northwest corner of Orangewood Avenue and Western Avenue. Um, they also opened a New Jersey location in 2006 and um, they've now come with a request um, to, um, they've actually acquired a property next door um, which is approximately 81,000 square feet and they uh, plan to expand and add um, approximately 37,000 square feet between the two buildings <coughs> and consolidate the properties. Um, that request will be going to the Planning Commission um, for a public hearing following the completion of the CEQA uh, environmental studies. The, um, the project, because it does exceed 10,000 square feet in addition, does not meet the uh, threshold to be exempt from the CEQA um, requirements. Therefore, this is why um, LSA will be preparing the, the studies. Uh, the, um, the approval of these uh, contracts um, does not have a cost to the city. Uh, the developer has actually already provided a check in the amount of um, $67,350 for the reimbursement. Very good. I just I just wanted to amplify and echo uh, the uh, success of that business. I want to commend staff for economic development for retention of the business and expansion, and the planning department for their efforts to facilitate uh, keeping them in town and, and having them grow. So I just want to highlight that and the fact that uh, it's an industrial area and doesn't get too much attention and notice, but it's doing very well. The industrial area out there in the West End of Garden Grove. And so I just wanted to highlight and thank you for giving us those facts. And with that, I'd like to make a motion to Second. Approve. Call to vote. Motion received. Six yes votes. And 4F, Mayor Pro Tem Beard. Yeah, I just wanted to see if HR could, uh, or the fire could, could comment on this uh, it looks like it's a four percent increase and, and I want to get some of the details related to uh, how it really impacts the city and uh, to have a little more discussion if need be but just to, for the information as an information on education to the public uh, yeah. mr. mayor pro tem to the and to the council members I think I can add a couple of comments uh, to this this is a uh, this is an agreement with our fire management association. It consists of five people: our two assistant fire chiefs and our three battalion chiefs. So, what this agreement does is exactly mirror the existing agreement that we entered into, that we came to agreement with with the fire, the larger fire association. So, it in, it it includes a four percent. H step, which is the top step of their salary range, and some very modest and consistent uh, medical increases that all the rest of the uh, fire department uh, personnel received. Uh, in this case, there's no impact to the city budget because uh, none of those individuals have um, are are lower on the salary range in their particular classification. So it's going to be a few years before they were to reach that top step. So no no fiscal impact to the city and completely consistent with what we did for all of the other uh, fire personnel so uh, I you know so hopefully that answers some of the questions about the agreement I think it was good for the public to hear that as well anything else to add to <laughs> <laughs> with that, I'll, I'll move approval of the item all the vote who seconded please oh sorry Your, your response time was a little slow on that one, Chief. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> Motion received. Six yes votes. Thank you. That takes us on to items for consideration. 5A. 5A is acceptance of 2016 <laughs> assistance to firefighters grant and authorize the grant matching funds in the amount of $30,812 and authorize the issuance of purchase orders to Ellen Curtis and Sons and Municipal Emergency Services to purchase nozzles, appliances, and thermal imaging cameras with AFG federal grant funds. And the fire chief is here to give a report. Uh, Mayor and council members, uh, again, I'm Tom Schultz, your fire chief, and it's a pleasure to be here tonight. Um, and I'd like to just say a little bit about this grant. Uh, we're, we're very pleased that we received this federal grant. 
Um, we have a very small staff in the fire department and they, they really have done yeoman's work and, and made this happen and I'm, I'm quite proud of the work they did. Uh, so the background on this is this is a FEMA grant, uh, 2016 grant. Nationally, there was about $310 million available nationally for different cities and fire departments to compete. In the state of California, only about 2.7% of the cities that applied were successful. We were one of three in the county of Orange to receive that grant. Laguna Beach and Anaheim were the other ones. And if we look at our match, our 10% match of $30,000, that was the money that we normally allocated for the replacement of nozzles and for some of this other technology, our thermal imaging cameras, which only allowed us to really purchase a small amount of what we really need. So this uh, grant will allow us to really modernize our equipment and uh, help us serve the community uh, much better. So um, thank you for the support. Great. Any questions, comments? It's fantastic. Yeah, right. congratulations yeah. on yeah. going out and yeah. getting the grant. Yeah. Um, I'd like to move it. Second. Call the vote. Motion received, six yes votes. Matters from council members, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Beard. Um, I don't have any items. I want to wish you a safe flight to uh, Thank Washington, D.C. Thank you. John? Uh, excited about the state of the city coming up next yeah. week, I believe already. I can't believe January is going to be coming to a close. Uh, a couple things I just wanted to mention. Um, the Women's Civic Club of Garden Grove, I'm always trying to put the word out for them. A lot of people know the building on the corner of Brookerson Chapman, but there's a group of women there that have been doing good work for a long time in the community. They have a dinner, 50s themed dinner dance coming up in June. I know it's way before June, but you can buy tickets for $45. The dance, dinner dance is uh, June 23rd at 6 p.m., so maybe save the date. And then also I had a privilege, privilege of going with them. They invited me to go along in, at Christmas time and give gifts to the disabled veterans at Josephine's house in Garden Grove. And man, what a joy to be able to go there. They had gifts for the women's club, had raised the money, bought the gifts, and had gifts for every tenant that lived there. And they actually, the tenants had, had given them a list of things that they need, and they were able to meet those, meet those needs for those people. So that was humbling, and uh, that's a good thing that's going on over there at Josephine's house. So that's it for me. Just wanted to mention that. Councilmember Tuha. Uh, I wish you have a safe flight and enjoy your trip in DC. And also, I just want to say happy birthday to Councilwoman, C C no, Grandma. Yes, not me, but my <laughs> Yes, <laughs> Stephanie, Grandma. <laughs> happy birthday to Grandma. Councilmember Kim Wynn. Um, just a quick reminder that this Thursday on the 25th at Irvine City Council, there will be the OCOG election, so I hope that my council members will be there to support me. I'm going to start out with a little vector reminder before I get to the grandma message. Um, so these, these cards are out on the table. Uh, if anybody has pets, it might be worthwhile to grab one. Um, this has to do with heartworm disease. Mosquitoes can infect our pets with heartworm. Uh, obviously, we know that there's medication out there to help with that. Um, there's flea and tick repellent, which also repels mosquitoes. So make sure you have that on your pets as we get back into mosquito season. We're really never out of mosquito season here in Orange County, but obviously we know that it ramps up as we get into the warmer months. Um, and again, there's some good literature here, some good information about what to do around your property, You know the dump and drain uh, scenario that we all need to be doing, and obviously vector controls information. So the cards in English, and then some of the cards have um, Vietnamese and Spanish on the back as well. So they're out on the table and I can always get more I'd like to see these in our local vet offices it's just good reminder for everybody we all we know we all love our pets a lot so um, and finally I just want to wish my grandmother a very happy 94th birthday born and raised here in Garden Grove so she's uh, Garden Grove through and through so happy birthday grandma I love you great uh, city manager Scott Stiles Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, just a couple things. Uh, one is, uh, you, you kind of got through so fast, I wanted to join in in thanking council for their support of the House Foods uh, expansion project, as Mayor Pro Tem Beard indicated. Uh, I don't think people realize how well the industrial, um, our industrial uh, uh, district is really doing. This was an example of a company that has been successful there. They decided to expand by the uh, site next to them. They're expanding, uh, as this one of the previous speakers said, and we've heard 
uh, just doing very sophisticated, uh, high-level food uh, production, something we should be proud of, really kind of high-tech stuff on what they're doing, and that, that, that industrial district is doing really well. Congrats to our staff also for the work that they did to, you know, work with them on the expansion. So uh, really, really good stuff out there. Um, uh, two other quick things. One is our budget subcommittee that uh, Councilman Beard, O'Neill, and Councilmember Kim Winter on. We're continuing our review of all the city departments. We're going through all of their um, their presentations about what a 5% budget reduction looks like for them. And then when we get done with all that, that'll probably be part of some of our discussion in the retreat when we go uh, when we get together to kind of talk about what that means, what do you all think about some of those things coming forward as we're trying to think long term about what our budget needs are, what our challenges are, that sort of thing. So we've got a little, we're, the, the committee is very, have been diligent and thanks to them, we, the staff, we appreciate that. And finally, I'm asked to remind everyone that um, the community is encouraged to participate in Garden Grove Restaurant Week which continues featuring all of our delicious tastes from our many prized dessert shops, bakeries, and restaurants uh, from now until Saturday, January 27th. Establishments like Brewster's Real Ice Cream, E Patisserie, Cafe on Main, Paris Baguette, located on the Promenade Center on Brookers Street, uh, are offering patrons specialty items and special pricing on desserts. It's a community-wide event we're involved in. Uh, adding to the sweet deal is the opportunity, opportunity to win a $100 gift card from one of the Restaurant Week businesses. Just save your receipts and bring them to the Garden Grove Chamber, Chamber of Commerce on Main Street by next Monday, January 29th, to uh, have an opportunity to win. You can visit the city's website or on social media to learn more. So good luck to everyone. Thank you. Um, just a few quick things and then we'll wrap up. Um, we had a closed session earlier tonight, but there was no reportable action. Omar's happy that I remember to say that. <laughs> um, uh, a couple of my colleagues mentioned my flight. I'm actually heading out on a red-eye flight tonight to Washington, D.C. for the next several days to attend the U.S. Conference of Mayors. I don't think the city has participated in that, at least in as many years as I can remember. And I'm very excited to go um, check it out. We're not actually a member, but they allow you to come participate and check it out because they want us to become a member. Um, I'm excited to go uh, rub elbows with uh, mayors from all across the country and hear ideas and hopefully bring a few um, innovative, fresh new ideas back home about what other cities are doing around the country. So um, I'm excited to go there and, and dive in, roll up my sleeves, and hopefully learn some things that I can get excited about and bring back home to share with everybody. Um, and lastly, Kim mentioned it, but um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to attend this, but I want to strongly urge um, that any of you who are available do. Um, this Thursday, uh, January 25th at 10 a.m. at Irvine City Hall is um, the OCOG board meeting. Um, Kim is actively pursuing a seat on that board. Um, there was a vacancy by another council member within our uh, geographic district or whatever. Um, that's making it available and the way this works is however many council members show up from our city and vote Those are all individually counted votes uh, on Kim's behalf presumably um, You know that the city has benefited greatly from um, From SCAG and from OCOG uh, largely funded through OCTA and initiatives that come out of these kind of regional planning and visioning groups like OCOG and SCAG um, lead to active transportation grants, open streets grant funding, um, different things that we've been the beneficiary of in the past, but we do not have a seat at the table. We really should. We're, um, it's right in our wheelhouse to be involved in those groups, and I'm glad that Kim is stepping up and trying to do it. And for our city, it would be great if, uh, if she could bring that seat back home for Garden Grove so, and for the district. So I just want to urge your attendance and go participate however you may vote on <laughs> on that item <laughs> and with that we will adjourn